Resuming debate, the honorable member for Cypress Hills Grasslands. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. It's an honour to rise in the House to speak to Bill C-50, which can be summed up really in one short sentence. It's an act to promote Liberal friends to fancy boards and to destroy the economy of Western Canada. Speaker, there's an obsession by this radical socialist environment minister to push his not-so-hidden agenda on Canadians to wipe oil and gas production off the face of the earth and ensure that we all live in energy poverty. And if you don't believe me, just listen to his own comments. Fossil fuels must be phased out by 2050, even earlier, if possible. Now let's contrast that statement with some comments from Japan's ambassador to Canada about the role that we could be playing in the world's future energy mix, in particular when it comes to LNG. Quote, the world is waiting for Canada. Canada can and should play a very important role to support the energy situation not only in Japan and South Korea, but in the world. End quote. Now when it comes to Canada, we are the closest market to Japan and South Korea that can be providers of clean, sustainable and affordable LNG. Canada has a natural advantage in producing LNG because of the naturally colder climate that we have for more than half of the year. Japan and South Korea are trying to find ways to avoid being energy dependent on uh, nefarious players like the communist regime in Beijing. As the Japanese ambassador said, we have an important role to play, but the world is still waiting. Look around the rest of the world and you can see what other options there are available to us for selling our LNG. Last year we saw Germany, Italy and France sign long-term LNG supply agreements with Qatar, but only after they came to Canada asking us to be their provider of choice. They came to us because they didn't want to go to a country with deplorable human rights records like Qatar. They didn't want to go to a country that is housing the leaders of Hamas. But because of this minister's blind radical loathing of our world-class energy sector, he said no. The Liberals left those countries with no choice but to basically support the enemies of one of our most important allies, Israel. And now in February, it was announced that India and Bangladesh are signing agreements, and so has a Chinese company as well. It's a shame, because if we look at the way the world is right now, there is both a moral case and a business case for producing and exporting Canadian energy, in particular our LNG. But this Liberal government doesn't get it. We have a radical environment minister and his incompetent prime minister who apparently would rather see energy deals go to a country that houses the head of Hamas rather than Canada with their high standards for things like human rights, high regulatory standards and an abundance of supply. So how does that make any sense? When the government stands against Canadian energy, we are not doing the world any favours. At the same time, it also hurts a lot of people in our own country who benefit from having a successful energy industry here at home. There are so many communities who rely on the oil and gas industry for their survival. It is the industry that keeps the lights on at the hockey rink, at the community centre, at the senior centre, and pays the royalties and taxes that are needed to invest in things like hospitals, schools, libraries and emergency services. Here in Ottawa, if you walk down the street across from Parliament, there's a good example of two different billboards, one after the other, that highlight the social benefits of the oil and gas sector. The first billboard says that Canada needs a fully funded Canada disability benefit. The second billboard is a message from Canada Action and it says the world needs more Canadian energy. So why are those two billboards related, Mr. Speaker? Because the royalties and the tax dollars that are raised when the energy sector is going strong fill the government coffers with the necessary money to invest in those types of social programs. They can't exist or succeed in the first place without generating a significant amount of revenue that comes from our energy sector. As much as the NDP Liberals keep trying, you can't get away with spending money that you don't have. Sooner or later, it runs out and bad things start to happen, like some of what we are seeing now with inflation again. And as we know, this Prime Minister doesn't have the type of common sense or self-control that our Conservative leader, the member from Carleton, has to be able to implement a one-for-one -one policy where for every new dollar of spending, the government has to find a dollar of savings. So when the government sets out to destroy the very industry that massively funds government programs and funds the equalization payments that prop up Quebec, everyone loses. That includes Indigenous communities as well. Natural Law Energy is a company made up of a group of First Nations in Saskatchewan and Alberta. They wanted to invest in the Keystone XL pipeline expansion so they could increase their cash flow, which would support their people. It would have been a great opportunity for economic reconciliation. Remember when the Prime Minister claimed that no relationship was more important to him than the one with First Nations? Well, apparently he said that for his own political gain. Because once he had a chance to put his words into action, he was nowhere to be found other than to say, no, you don't get to participate in the economy or have an economic self-determination and reconciliation. And then there are the thousands of jobs and economic spin-offs that come from having a robust oil and gas sector in your area. 
There was a local news headline in my riding recently that read, April oil and gas public offering shows Kindersley area generated $234,074.68 in revenue just from one public offering. That doesn't include all the wages of workers in the area or the money they are spending in their community. This past winter was like every other winter across the prairies. We had some strong cold snaps. And more urgently, there was a period of time where Alberta was sending warnings to its people to reduce their power consumption to avoid rolling blackouts during peak times when it was in the minus 40s. How could this happen to a province like Alberta? Well, they had an NDP government that drank the same Kool-Aid as this radical environment minister and decided to close down the reliable, affordable baseload power and replace it with expensive intermittent wind and solar power. And the irony, Mr. Speaker, is that it wasn't due to a lack of wind. There was enough wind those days to produce power. The issue was that it was so cold that it wasn't safe for the turbines to operate. Mr. Speaker, I've actually worked in the wind industry, and I, and I know that that actually happens because it happened all the time on the wind farm that I worked at. As quite often in the winter, is also overcast, and the days are short, so there is next to no solar capacity that is actually available. The previous NDP government in Alberta literally almost killed people because of their radical ideology. Thank God that Saskatchewan had the ability and the capacity to fire up Boundary Dam Unit Number 4 to be able to help provide power to our neighbours. Thank God that our province has invested in natural gas power stations like the Chinook Power Plant in Swiftcurrent that can provide the equivalent baseload power to hundreds of thousands of homes. But if the Liberals' radical agenda is allowed to proceed, this is only going to be the beginning, and this is just a snapshot of what you can expect. You see, they have this idea that any new natural gas has to be phased out by 2035 too, if not sooner. I met with some of the turbine suppliers, and they're willing to tell me some of the timelines to get the parts needed to build a plant now, and in some cases it might take up to 10 years to get all the parts that you need to build a power plant. And it's the same story without trying to procure solar panels and wind turbine equipment because there's minimal manufacturing in North America for that equipment in that industry as well. But in order to comply with the regulations that this government's rolling out, you have to be in operation before 2035. Simply ordering the power plant prior to the deadline isn't good enough. Canadians are at a serious risk of being plunged into widespread energy poverty. But the Liberals know that. The regulations that are published in the Canada Gazette told us this that the people most at risk or most likely to already live in energy poverty are single mothers and seniors living on a fixed income and that their regulations would disproportionately impact those people. They also know the devastating unemployment that their transition is set to cause. The Natural Resources Minister received a memo discussing exactly that. Their own government document says that their so-called just transition will affect over 200,000 workers in the energy sector. That's listed as 1% of our employment rate. And if you look at how unemployment numbers are already rising, we really can't afford that to keep, keep going up. The memo also happens to mention 292,000 workers in agriculture, 193,000 workers in manufacturing. Does anyone really believe that these Liberals are going to replace hundreds of thousands of jobs on the line? Combine all this with the carbon tax, the Liberal fuel regulations, the emissions cap regulations, and other burdensome regulations like the Unconstitutional Impact Assessment Act, it's quite easy to see the picture and the place where the Liberals are trying to take us. Their plan punishes Canadians and it'll bring misery and devastation upon them. But thank God that there's an election on the horizon where Canadians can give this radical socialist environment minister the boot and get Canada back on track with a Conservative government that will axe the tax and fix the budget so that Canadians can get back to living in prosperity instead of poverty. Canada can become an energy dependent country, an energy independent country that no longer relies on imported oil from dictators. We can use our own resources to produce what our country and the world needs. Clean, affordable, ethical and sustainable Canadian energy and only a Conservative government will get it done.